Yeah, shall we wait for two minutes or shall we start? We'll wait, nice. one. we'll wait for one minute. Okay. So 18 have joined. Ma'am, uh, there are seven students who have uh, like interviewed today, Signal Chips Company. Okay. Okay. So what about others? Others, uh, they should join now. Okay. Okay. Uh, today I'm just going to give an uh, introduction and uh, uh, what all you have studied in uh, DICD part. No, I'm just going to uh, revise that or recap. Uh, shall we recap that? Okay. So from the next class onwards, uh, uh, that is uh, Monday 6 to 7 and Tuesday 6 to 7, we will uh, move on to the exact uh, syllabus, whatever it is there. Okay. So I'll start now. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. We'll just do the slide share now. You can able to uh, see the screen, guys? No, ma'am. No? Oh, no. No, ma'am. You can able to see the screen now? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Now you can see. Okay. 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 You can able to see the screen, right? Yeah, this is the orientation slide. Okay. But I just want to say about this. Uh, subject is uh, static timing analysis. Could you able to hear me, right? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Hello? Yes, okay. So the subject name is the static timing analysis, and your subject code is 18MV E3 E3. Okay? So this is the introduction we already have told in the orientation. I just want to uh, uh share the syllabus okay so in the unit one it is a basic of timing concepts propagation delay sleeve a uh, timing arcs minimum and maximum uh, timing uh, paths and uh, clock domains okay so that is that uh, uh, nowadays we are all uh, living in the world which is uh, manipulated by a lot of things right so which all are around us so what i'm talking about is 
and analog and digital devices like a smart television you know led tvs earlier uh, we used to use a tube tvs right so now it is a, a smart uh, led tvs mobile phones that is iphone and set top box because for a cable channel and all now we have a, a set up box set top box is also available okay and internet of things so the autonomous vehicle and many more which has a dramatic impact on our society yes or no okay so as you know all guys uh, without digital nothing is a possible right hello hello yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma okay so like a smart yes, television or a mobile phone or a set top box internet of things or autonomous vehicle and lot of uh, things and many more which cannot be uh, covered in this particular uh, subject but we are going to discuss about how we can do a timing analysis and uh, what may be the setup time what may be the hold time and what may be the contamination delay or a propagation delay minimum uh, uh, you know minimum delay failure maximum delay failure all those things we are going to uh, discuss okay so it does not matter that you are a computer science engineer or a information technology or a electrical engineer for especially for this particular uh, subject but we might be thinking that all the digital circuits will function for your answer the digital design will going to make it possible so whether you can be a computer science engineer or an electrical engineer or an electronics engineer but with the static timing analysis so anybody can you know analyze that particular timing delay and you can analyze the uh, circuitry okay so it is an art of designing a digital circuit and to encapsulate them into an integrated circuits okay so in this subject we are going to focus on only on the static timing analysis and rather than the designing the circuit i am not going to discuss anything uh, how to design the circuit only we are going to discuss in this particular subject as the timing analysis okay so the static timing analysis is a very important phase of a vlsi design of flow okay so this is what we are going to discuss in unit 1 okay so what are the that's what timing parameters of a combinational logic gates and this you have understood in your dicd also anyway i am going to, to uh, i am going to do today once again with that uh, the uh, whatever you have learnt in dicd part okay so in unit 2 uh, what we are going to learn is that is uh, uh, the resources for uh, the static timing uh, analysis okay so uh, and network optimization parallel timing optimization and post silicon timing validation so this network optimization and parallel timing optimization and post silicon validation it is available in your baskar test book and uh, the introduction delay concepts for digital designing all those things it will be available in uh, the uh, jai gauri uh, test book okay so she has written in an uh, the what is that uh, very simple uh, uh, english so you people can uh, uh, go through with that uh, book okay so so what is this uh, resources for a uh, static timing analysis flow resources for a static timing analysis flow so basically uh, this unit is going to uh, describe about the resources which are required for a uh, static timing analysis for design okay so resources for timing analysis is what libraries netlist uh, parasitic and design constraints okay so libraries are the one of the main resources for performing the 
uh, static timing analysis, right? Because uh, in cadence, your people already use the cadence in that uh, for an uh, AND gate or an inverter, you'll be dragging that component. So it should be there in the library already. Or you will be designing uh, uh, using a transistor level, and then you are going to create an one inverter. And whenever that inverter is required, you are dragging that and you are connecting to the uh, circuit. So libraries are uh, are the one of the main resource for performing the uh, static timing analysis. So all timing information captures in libraries are mainly of standard cell, IO paths, intellectual properties that is called ips or hard macros such as double data rate okay that is called ddr and peripheral component interconnect express that is pci core okay see that's what i said intellectual properties if you want to create a new uh, uh, say for example uh, uh, customized say i i want a level shift inverter so i want to design a ternary inverter so the ternary inverter, when you're going to design, it should give us 0, 1, and 2 value, right? So in that 0, 1, and 2, that one middle level value, if it is reaching only to 0. 0.9, okay, then, uh, then there is a problem, right? It is not uh, coming exactly at uh, the logic 1 level. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use an extra circuitry called a level shift uh, uh, ternary, I mean, level shift in where I'm going to design that extra circuitry so that it is exactly fit at, uh, exactly at one volts, right? So to do that, okay, so I, I may have a own design. So I may go for a patent level. So I may go for a intellectual property. This is my customized design because right now the Texas instrument people are working on this uh, uh, level shift uh, a concept so they are going to uh, create that particular circuitry in the library itself so you no need to go for an extra you can just drag that uh, one nmos and one pmos uh, component so that in inside the transistor only when you design a ternary inverter it is going to give a, a proper value of 0 1 2 so that's why the people are going for an intellectual property because it is my own design. So that's what I had uh, put it inside the uh, library like that. Okay. So apart from the timing information, the libraries contains uh, many attributes like a uh, area of the cells, IPs, hard macros, and their functionality as well. Okay. So these attributes are not needed for a static timing analysis. There are a very few attributes which are related to timing analysis. Okay. That we'll be discussing in the future classes. Okay. So the second is uh, the resource for timing analysis is what is that netlist? That is netlist which provides all cells, IPs, and uh, some information along with their uh, connectivity, OK? So the third resource for timing analysis is parasitic files for delay calculation. Parasitic files for delay calculation for each cell and interconnects. Interconnects is nothing but your nets. Okay, so cell delays can be extracted from the libraries and net delays are calculated by using net delays. How we are going to calculate, guys? Hello? Hello, guys? By resistance and uh, capacitance. What? WLM. By capacitance net and resistance. No, no, net delays net are delay, calculated. Yeah. By using a wire load model, right? That is a wire, right? WLM. Uh -huh. Are you getting it? That is a wire load. Okay. So at your pre labored stage also you are calculating it. But actual resistance and capacitance value will be calculated at what stage, guys? Actual resistance and capacitance value. Hello, are you there? After layout. extraction stage. Huh? Extraction stage. Extraction stage so after. Uh... That, means that, that means that it is a post-layered stage, right? Yes, ma'am. 
pre layout we are going to calculate the wire load model and post layout we are going to calculate the exact capacitance and the resistance value are you getting it okay and the fourth and the most important resource for your uh, timing analysis is the design constraints okay so design constraints plays a major role at your pre layout and the post layout stage okay are you getting it so how to write a good quality constraints so the designer must have a good understanding about the design and its performance criteria then only we can we, are, we can write a good quality constraints okay so what is the design constraints what it is going to include it is going to include a clock definition false paths multi cycle paths case analysis and many other constraints okay so the detailed information about uh, this parasitic files etc we are going to discuss in the uh, future uh, classes okay so what is next is uh, the concepts of the concepts of noise and the crosstalk for a static timing analysis okay so the concept of noise and the crosstalk for static timing analysis so in this we are going to discuss about uh, the coupling capacitance concept okay and then uh, the a uh, type of uh, crosstalk noise or glitch okay and then uh, type of uh, crosstalk delta delay noise libraries okay and then uh, crosstalk effect on timing analysis and then strategy of crosstalk on uh, uh, nanometer design and then it is a cause for uh, crosstalk on integrated circuits and crosstalk prevention methods okay so this unit is basically uh, focuses on the noise and its effect on the integrated circuits and uh, we all know that the noise is an unwanted signal okay on the required signal but it gets added during the uh, modulation and demodulation process all these things we are going we had discussed in communication so when it gets added with the required signal it uh, affects the functionality of the circuit right so whatever we want to achieve say i want i need for i mean i want for 3 volts peak to peak but it is going to give with the noise you know disturbance and all i am not going to it may suppress also or it may increase the value also okay so in integrated circuits uh, a large number of wires and layers are laid during the fabrication and it leads for the possibility of the noise introduced in in it okay so how this noise will be added in the integrated circuits because uh, if you use a more wires in the circuit always when we design a circuit the component to component contact should be there okay so avoid using wires okay if you use more wires then there is a possibility of adding the noise in the a circuit okay so the kind of noise appears in the integrated circuits is called as crosstalk that only we are calling it as a cross talk so it is due to the what is the possibility what is the possibility of getting the cross talk guys hello 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 yes ma'am so what is the possibility of uh, getting the cross talk huh when two wires are placed too close or uh, high voltage signal is placed uh, in close to a low voltage signal and all okay see actually it is due to the parasitic coupling capacitance it is due to the parasitic coupling capacitances okay so where it is going to available it is going to available between the layers running parallel in an integrated circuit 
okay so the concept of coupling capacitances between the layer and the cross talk will be discussed in this a uh, chapter are you getting it hello guys are you getting it yes ma'am okay, okay then what about the unit 4 talks so unit 4 is about uh, the uh, constraints of constraints for sta okay so what is that constraints that is a clock constraints and uh, other timing constraints external delays of dua timing expectation that is multi cycle path false path clock grouping case analysis disable timing and path with derate okay so in this particular unit so what we are going to discuss is about the specification for the design is defined based on the customer requirement yes or no do you agree for this the specification for the design is defined based on the customer requirement okay for any product if you take so customer is going to say i need like this so and so yeah, these are the inputs and uh, this is what the output is expected okay so this is what the input i want to give so remaining it is left to you guys so you have to design the circuit so the specifications they are going to give so constraints are the restrictions on the design based on the specification okay see uh, i uh, need at this particular point i need only 1 volt drop should be there so around this uh, second stage i need only 0.5 volts drop should be there so these are all called as constraints okay so that constraint is again is depends on the design based on the specification so all these constraints are written in the single file and that file we are calling it as a script file and are written using either a tcl language what is the tcl language is called as tool command language tcl is nothing but tool command language all or perl because intel people are using the perl okay even uh, qualcom i think so they are using perl scripting only okay and other scripting languages again it depends on the company to company but intel is sure it has they are using a perl scripting so these script uh, files are sourced while running the tool and it passes the informations of constraints in the different stages of vlsi design okay so during the phase of synthesis it allows the synthesis engine to link and map the required component into the design to satisfy the specification finally we want to satisfy the specification according to the customer requirements so during the other phases of the design flow the constraint the constraints helps to verify the ic's accuracy because accuracy plays a vital role okay so for the specification so to check the accuracy and perfectness of the design for the specification and the quality of the constraints are very very important so what is the quality of the again this quality wherever it comes so able designer the designer should have a experienced person he should have experience in designing the circuit so he can only do uh, a he can only write the a, a script file that is a quality script file he can write it okay so to check the accuracy and the perfectness of the design for the specification the quality of the constraints are very important okay so and uh, what i want to say is detailed analysis including your eda tool commands for the constraints are focused in this chapter and the constraints and concepts are discussed in this unit so are always common for any design irrespective of the usage of eda design, eda tool okay so once if you know the constraint for stm whatever we are discussing in this particular unit it is a uh, common even if the tool changes or even if the tool command language is perl script uh, any uh, other script language even if you uh, use it but this will be uh, this uh, concept will be uh, common okay but the commands used here to explain the concepts are related to 
prime time tool so uh, the basically uh, the test book which i am referring uh, uh, the baskar or jayagauri so they if they used a prime tool that is i told not tcl is there perl is there so whatever the uh, you know the concept uh, i'll be dealing with that by using a as a prime time tool okay based on that a script i'll be explaining that so when you go to company obviously they are going to give a train but uh, they are going to give a training but uh, this concept is going to remain the uh, same okay so the last unit is uh, timing uh, uh, violation and uh, verification okay so what is this uh, timing violation and uh, verification so slack a uh, critical path of timing report setup violation hold violation multi cycle path half cycle path timing checks for asynchronous timing pass recovery and removal violation check input output timing pass checks a drc violation check multi speed clock domain cross talk checks techniques to fix timing violation techniques to fix setup violation and techniques to fix hold violation okay and timing uh, behavior okay so the different timing violations and verification methods uh, we are going to discuss in this uh, particular unit with the uh, good examples and reports so the discuss checks are performed by the sti engine as a part of your uh, timing analysis procedure okay so this is basically there are reports are there so that reports i am going to discuss and how the setup time violations and um, in this particular uh, subject there are some problems is also there and uh, what i planned uh, uh, for uh, this particular subject uh, your assignment anyway it uh, uh, carries uh, 30 marks okay okay so your assignment carries uh, 30 marks so what i planned is uh, uh, 10 marks uh, there will be a seminar right 10 marks is for seminar it is a group of two so i am going to give some topics uh, based on that uh, not only uh, you have to refer the test book also you should uh, 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 do the literature survey of that uh, particular uh, topic okay and you have to give the advantages disadvantages and the topic will be very small okay so i think maybe in each uh, uh, unit i am going to share on two or three topics uh, for you guys so only for the uh, seminar purpose that is for 10 marks okay so in a group of two you have to do it any doubt in this 10 marks seminar will be there it is a group of two and you have to tell about that particular topic and good ppt presentation along with that you have to do the literature survey is there any papers have come out based on that advantages disadvantages and applications and which industry is right now they are working on that any doubt about this 10 marks hello guys are you there hello yes ma'am yes ma'am <laughs> should yes, be an interaction okay so sometimes i will not come to know whether you people are leaving the group or you know joining once again so in between i am going to ask the questions okay so you cannot turn on your laptop and uh, uh, go and take bath and come or have lunch and come no okay so at least whatever i am telling in the class uh, please listen about that uh, concepts okay so it will be a great help for you guys so that is for 10 marks so remaining 10 marks um, i'm going to give a flipped classroom that means that uh, i'll going to send the uh, video okay so from next class onwards i'm going to do a board teaching board teaching means i have a tab i'm going to write it on the tab so it is more or less you can uh, see like a board itself since it is a introduction class and uh, recap about uh, the whatever you learnt in dicd so that's why i'm using this uh, share screen option okay so uh, what i was telling yeah flipped classroom so i'm going to send the video on youtube i'm going to upload that uh, video lecture my uh, video lecture on the youtube and uh, uh, that i'm going to ask a question it will be an individual assessment for 10 marks 
it it is like a quiz so i think i may share in the google uh, classroom that questions so i am going to allot the times a 10 question 10 minutes or 15 minutes max okay you have to answer those uh, questions it's like a quiz questions only multiple choice type okay this you understood yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so remaining 10 marks okay so remaining 10 marks will be a group activity so it is a group of four okay so that means that you have to uh, take up <coughs> a small topic say i will say a master slave a d flip flop so the uh, this master slave flip flop can be constructed in many ways by using a past transistor logic or maybe a tri state inverter or maybe a, a two d latches there are many ways right so uh, i'm just giving an example so you have to use that circuit and you have to do the static timing analysis part and uh, the saurabh told that uh, he has done uh, see again uh, maulab is now is joining it uh, so don't do guys like that okay so the saurabh told that uh, he has done a minor project under uh, kariyappa sir and he has done worked on static timing analysis some something he said that clock edge or you know some topic he said okay uh, so like that you can take a small topic and you have to uh, show the setup time and hold time about uh, the violations and calculations and all you have to show are you getting it it's a group of four it's a group of four and that is for 10 marks and uh, if the classes are uh, going to start in october uh, offline classes then uh, that the hot spot is the place you know that is uh, a tamarind tree is there no near to our department so that uh, place we are calling it as a hot spot in that hot spot place you have to sit in a group of four and you have to show the demo okay to me and you have to run the simulation now it is using a cadence tool you have to run the simulation and you have to show and you have to give a report so uh, if it is uh, in uh, online then uh, you have to record it record in the sense uh, uh, that uh, please uh, be you know listen carefully how to record it uh, so you can use any uh, google uh, meet or a uh, uh, zoom okay but um, it is not like simulation and uh, waveform screenshot is not allowed so one should operate it okay so in the cadence so you if you use a virtuoso tool so you should operate that like uh, click on that once it operates that video i need it okay and all four should talk are you getting it all four should talk so some may give a introduction and some may give the design concept some may give the uh, how it is going to give working of the circuit and some may going to discuss about the results and discussions and conclusions are you getting it so that is for 10 marks okay i can uh, send you the uh, sample video like uh, the last time uh, our ug students have done it uh, so i can send you the sample video that uh, it's uh, just a 5 minutes video just 5 minutes video you have to send if it is offline not required is that clear yes ma'am yes ma'am ma yeah so like that uh, i have divided 30 marks so i won't give when you know, a more assignments kind of a thing and you know uh, bring the solution and solve it i won't give like that and all so it this will be easy for you guys also and for me to evaluate also it is easy and uh, uh, the people uh, used to come for uh, national board of accreditation those people also asking in the same way they need for a uh, flipped classroom uh, flipped classroom i used to do usually a group activity as a individual assessment both but uh, for mtech students i used to do individual activity and then seminar for 10 marks and remaining 10 marks again it is a, a group activity for uh, group of four okay so it is about the uh, small project kind of a thing some some circuit you take and you do say last time last to last time one, one of my student have done about uh, the uh, true face single face flip flop uh, that is uh, tspc okay so she has done uh, the static timing analysis only uh, one paper is already there if you want an idea i am going to send that so one simple circuit you take no need to take uh, um, the uh, because see that's what i said master slave d flip flop pass transistor logic and then tri state inverter many circuits are there any one circuit you can take it and you analyze it and you can uh, show the results are you getting it yes ma'am 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 yes ma'am
not all the circuits one group can take a master slave uh, flip flop using uh, a tri state inverter logic another group can take a master slave flip flop uh, can be designed by using two d latches like that are you getting it yes ma'am yes, no need to do all the circuits one single circuit but uh, you should uh, uh, show how the static timing analysis uh, uh, plays an important role in that particular circuit are you getting it hello yes ma'am okay so now we'll uh, start uh, recap with the uh, you know dicd concept so this this space is okay or i'm going too fast or too i'm going too fast is it okay yes ma'am it is okay it is okay 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 so when i'm uh, doing the slide sharing the there is a bandwidth problem so that's what like i am going to turn off the uh, video okay so i am going to share the uh, screen of uh, the uh, sequential uh, circuit uh, design okay able to see this no ma'am hello no 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 ah huh? one minute no ma'am okay no no hello yeah now it's coming ma'am okay okay so this is about uh, the uh, sequential uh, circuit uh, design okay so the sequential circuits are usually designed with flip flops right are you getting it flip flops are latches hello yes okay so that's why it is sometimes it is called as a, a memory elements that means that it is going to hold the data and that data we are calling it as a, a tokens okay so the purpose of this elements is not a really a memory but we are calling it as a memory elements instead it is to enforce a sequence to distinguish the current token from the previous or the next token are you getting it hello yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so actually uh, there is a, a static circuits and also there uh, there is a dynamic circuits also but the static circuits refer to the gates that have no clock input okay such as a complementary cmos or a pseudo nmos or a pass transistor logic but dynamic circuits refer to gates that have a clock input so especially you have learned the concept called domino logic right so a sequencing element with a static storage employs some sort of feedback to retain it output value indefinitely so if you see any sequential circuits there is a feedback for a combination circuit there is no feedback but here the output is not only depends on the present inputs but also on the past outputs also okay so an element with a dynamic storage generally maintains a value as a charge on a capacitor that will leak away even if it is not refreshed for a long period of time so what is the best example we can give is dram every time you have to charge and discharge charge and discharge right okay so that is called dynamic circuits so the choices of a static or a dynamic for gates and for sequencing elements can be independent okay so this is a best example whatever i have shown here is um the sequencing the static uh, circuits so look at the circuit diagram so uh, what you understood here there is a latch there is a flip flop what you understood here 
హలో యతీష్ yes ma'am no uh, what you understood based on this circuit diagram i'm from you circuit yeah yeah the data uh, in the uh, after the first rising edge of clock hmm in the latch the data will take very few less time okay but in clock i am not seeing the data no see when once you see the diagram here okay so first i said the lattice and the flip flops are the two most commonly used sequencing elements okay so both have a three terminals how three terminals data is the d input clock is the input and q is the output okay if the flip flop is also having a three uh, terminals data d is the input q is the output and clock is the input but you can see the the difference between here is there is a triangle it is there the triangle indicates it is a edge triggered flip flop okay with the triangle if there is a small uh, bubble or a round it is there then that we are calling it as a negative edge triggered flip flop if only triangle is there we are calling it as a, a positive edge triggered flip flop okay yes ma'am so now the latch is a transparent so the latch is going to see is the clock is high if the clock is high then if d changes output values also changes are you getting it so look at this diagram here there is a clock is high the first output is called as q latch it is going to see whether the d is high yeah output latch is also high next d goes to low state because clock is high so the latch is also going to low state are you getting it so the latch is going to see only if the clock is high and opaque when the clock is low so if the clock is high if the d change the d keep on changes if the data input keep on changes as high or low okay then q also changes as high or low are you getting it yes it's not like that the flip flop is an edge triggered device edge triggered means once if the clock is high then it is going to see what is the value of d if d is low then the output will be low if d is high then output will be high so look at this when your clock is high here the clock is high means during the rising edge of the clock it is going to see during the rising edge of the clock your d value is low so your output q output will be low even if your d changes to high state when your clock is high but the q output is not going to change because the q output is going to change a state only during the rising edge of the clock until it the q output will be in the low state Um, and it is going to change a state only on the next rising edge of the clock are you getting it yes ma'am this concept is clear that's what he says that so the latch is transparent when the clock is high and opaque when the clock is low so when the clock is high the d flows to the q as the latch is just act like a buffer buffer means whatever the value it is there on the d it is just passing on to the q output okay but the flip flop is not like that the flip flop is an edge trigger device that copies the d to q only on the rising edge of the clock and ignores the d value at all other times are you getting it yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma okay so is this concept is understood yes ma'am or one minute once again no i'm understood you understood okay so the next is called as a sequencing methods the next is called as a uh, sequencing methods so there are three different uh, sequencing methods you can uh, see this uh, circuit diagram okay so uh, what uh, what are this uh, first one is called as a flip flop based method the second one is called as two phase a uh, transparent latch method the third one is called as <coughs> pulsed latches method okay so 
the sequencing static circuits are widely used methods so that is flip flop based method two phase transparent based latch method and pulsed latch method okay now so if you see uh, the first diagram okay there are three methods there are three methods each method is going to use a combinational logic block are you getting it you can see this three methods all the three methods have a combinational logic block circuitry will be there okay and in all the cases there is a clock waveform will be there are you getting it so there is a clock here we have used a 5 1 and 5 2 and here we have used a 5 p that is the a phase clock okay and you can see the horizontal axis over here that is the dotted lines the horizontal axis correspond to the time at which the token reaches a point in the circuit token reaches a point means i have taken a one full cycle that is one on period and one off period i have taken it okay so that is one full cycle i have considered it so if the token is let us discuss about uh, the first method okay so if the token is captured in the first flip flop on the first rising edge of the clock then where it goes it propagates through the combinational logic and reaches the second flip flop on the second rising edge of the clock are you getting it so the horizontal line that means is that your tc or whatever i have written so that indicates uh, the on period and the off period and, and you can also see the dashed vertical lines here that indicates the boundary between the one clock cycle and the next okay so i have used a uh, dashed lines so this is i have taken only one clocked uh, cycle okay so uh, in the uh, flip flop based method i have considered the clock period as tc in a two phase system the phases are separated as uh, you can see here as a t non overlap okay i can i thought of using a pointer okay anyway uh, so t uh, non overlap okay and in a pulsed system the pulse width you can see here as a tpw okay so how in each cases the uh, the system or a sequencing methods is going to uh, work okay so the let us consider uh, the first method called a flip flop based system method the flip flop based system method uses only one flip flop on each cycle boundary you can see here it uses only one flip flop because the second flip flop it is coming for the second rising edge of the a uh, clock okay so the token or a data we are calling it as a token or a data so it is going to advance from one clock cycle uh, to the next on the rising edge of the clock okay suppose if the token arrives too early what it does in the flip flop based method there is a disadvantage actually if the token arrives too early hello will it lose data ha huh? there is hold time violation yeah if the token arrives uh, too early it waits at the flip flop until the next clock cycle because there is a time waste but this method the flip flop based method it does like that only okay so once your token or the data it arrives at too early it wait at the flip flop until the next clock cycle okay so what i can say that so the flip flop can be used as a pair of back to back latches using a clock and its complement that is used in the second that method we are calling it as a two phase transparent base latches so if we separate the latches we can divide a full cycles of combinational logic into two phases because in you see the flip flop based method this is one cycle of a combinational logic 
but here we are splitting the combinational logic circuitry into the two phases so first one half cycle there is a combinational logic circuitry and the second half cycle there is a combinational uh, logic uh, circuitry okay and the two latch clocks we are calling it as a phi1 and a phi2 so it may correspond to the clock and its complement because whenever your phi1 is high phi2 will be off whenever your phi1 is off phi2 will be high okay and also we say that the non overlapping so t non overlap should be greater than 0 there should not be a overlap okay at any given time at least one clock or sorry uh, at any given time the one clock should be low and another clock should be high at any given time one clock should be low another clock should be high why why it is like that hello hello yes ma'am ah at any given time one clock should be low another clock should be opaque or high why it is like that opaque or a transparent or a high why it is like that because we have divided the latches ma'am tc by 2 what we have divided the whole time period into like half so each gets half of yeah, the yeah but yeah but uh, but i yeah it, it, if it is divided but one should be on and other should be off why it is so like that i don't know why yeah, why, but... why the circuit should be designed in, in such that one should be on another should be off data has to be sampled properly ma'am so yeah preventing one token from catching up with another so a best example what i can quote is the two latches behave in the same manner as two watertight gates in a canal lock okay so that's how one will be on another will be off okay so the third method is called as pulsed latch system so the pulsed latch system eliminate one of the latches okay so from each clock cycle it uses only pun, uh, one pulse and remaining should be the uh, off period only so we are going to apply a brief pulse to the um, uh, we are going to apply a brief pulse to the remaining uh, latch okay suppose if the pulse is shorter than the delay through the combination logic we can still expect that a token or a data will only advance through one clock cycle on each pulse okay so this is going to give uh, just an idea about uh, the three different uh, uh, static uh, sequencing methods okay but uh, what are all uh, delays it is going to coming into the picture when we design this uh, circuitry okay so tpd uh, propagation delay tcd logic contamination delay and tpcq that is latch or a flop clock to queue propagation delay then tccq latch or a flop uh, clock to queue contamination delay tpdq latch d to queue propagation delay tcdq latch d to queue contamination delay t setup latch or a flop a setup time and t hold latch or a flop whole time so these are all the delays are coming into the picture when we are going to design the uh, sequencing a uh, static uh, circuits so any doubt guys any doubt guys no. hello no doubt ma'am no doubt okay now um, have you seen the circuits right in dicd combinational logic how it is going to behave what are all the delays are coming into the picture if you use a flip flop what are the delays it is going to coming into the picture and if you use a latch what are all the delays it's going to coming into the picture hello saurabh Ma'am, can you repeat, ma'am? See, look at the circuit diagram. 
okay so the logic is also explained over here we know what are all the delays it is going to occur i just told some eight delays uh three six yeah eight delays it is coming into the picture right so in this particular circuit diagram if you see a combinational logic if you see a flip-flop if you see a latch okay so combinational logic it is going to produce a uh, two different delays contamination delay and propagation delay if you insert uh, any combinational logic circuitry in your designing in your design it is going to produce two delays are you getting it tcd and tpd if you use a flip flop in your circuit design then it is going to give a setup time hold time clock to queue contamination delay clock to queue propagation delay if you use a latch in your circuit design it is going to give a delay of setup time hold time clock to queue contamination delay clock to queue propagation delay d to queue contamination delay and d to queue propagation delay are you getting it want me to repeat this once again i will explain in detail with each circuitry but are you getting it hello guys yes, so see any circuit if you are going to design combination logic circuitry will be there flip flop will be there and either flip flop or latches any one will be there or both also you can uh, design it but usually both is not possible either you will be using a flip flop with a combination logic circuitry or you will be using a latches with the combination logic circuitry okay so when you are designing a circuit what are all the delays coming into the picture how you are going to avoid this delays that is the subject is static timing analysis so how we are going to write the script file how we are going to put uh, uh, the you know uh, specification the customer is going to give a specification how we are going to write the constraint file how we are going to uh, constraint file uh, means constraint means that is going to write in the script file okay so that is uh, how we are going to do everything that is this subject called static timing analysis okay now if you see this uh, circuit diagram that is a combinational logic circuit diagram what it is coming into the picture what it is going on your mind only figure a you see in figure a okay you got a combinational logic right okay okay so figure a you see the combination logic circuitry it is written tpd and tcd any anybody knows how it exactly it is going to work hello saurab maula yatish kiran yes ma'am ma'am ma whenever the input changes ma'am the output at the instant where the minimum time occurs that is contamination delay ma'am whenever the output becomes stable that is the propagation delay ma'am maximum uh, time in which super. the super super correct so uh, this particular figure it is going to show the response of a combination logic that is to the input a you can see here the input a is changing from one arbitrary value to another yes or no initially it was high and then it is changing to low value okay so the output y cannot change instantaneously it is not going to change so after the contamination delay that is tcd y may begin to change or glitch that this is nothing but your glitch are you getting it okay after the contamination delay you have got a zigzag kind of a thing no that we are calling it as a glitch so after a contamination delay why may begin to change or glitch but after a propagation delay why must have settled to a final value so if we use a combinational logic circuitry the two delays is going to coming into the picture that is contamination delay and the propagation delay any doubt in figure a no ma'am okay next we will discuss about uh, the figure b so how it is uh, going to show the response 
uh, by using a flip flop. Anybody knows about the flip flop? Hello? Start analyzing, no? Because this is you already studied, right? Chandana? Yes, ma'am. Aishwarya? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you already studied. Analyze, no? What is the response of a flip flop? <laughs> Shall I explain? Hello, guys. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Shall I explain? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. So this is the response of a flip flop. So look at this uh, diagram. Uh, you just observe the D input window. Okay. You just observe the D input. So that is the data input must be stable. It should be stable. Okay. But if it is a zigzag kind of a thing, that means that the data is not stable. So the data must be stable for some window that means for some period of time it should be stable on the rising edge of the flop okay and then the d input must have settled by some setup time see the d input should be stable for some window to uh, you know uh, the uh, what what is that uh, it should you know it should be stable for some window and uh, it should be we are going to take the value at the rising edge of the clock you can see here so the rising edge of the clock means what is the delay it is coming into the picture it is called as setup time so t setup it is going to come that is before the rising edge of the clock and it should not change until the whole time that's what see here your data is stable for some window that is from this edge to this edge so before the rising edge of the clock, T set up and it should hold the data until the whole time. So that's why it is called it as a T hold. Again, after that, your zigzag, it is continuous. So which two delays is coming into the picture? Set up time and the whole time. OK, so next. Output begins to change when your output is begins to change after your clock to queue contamination delay output begins to change after you can see here output begins to change after the clock to queue contamination delay the delay we are calling it as tccq and then output is not stable it may glitch the same thing whatever we are discussed in the combination logic and completely settles when it is going to completely settles after your clock to queue propagation delay so when you use a flip-flop in your design circuitry four delays are coming into the picture setup time hold time clock to queue contamination delay clock to queue propagation delay so the data must be stable for some window okay and once it is settled for some window so then before the rising edge of the clock the T setup time is coming into the picture and it should not change again until the whole time that is called T hold after the clock edge. So the output begins to change only after your clock to queue contamination delay and completely settles after your clock to queue propagation delay. Any doubt? Any doubt? Any doubt? No. No, ma'am. No, ma Want me to repeat Want once again? No, ma'am. Okay. Now look at this figure uh, C. Okay, somebody has uh, turned on. Mute yourselves. Okay. And whenever I ask a question, you just unmute. Okay. So look at this figure C. So figure C, it is going to show the response of a latch. Now the D input must set up and hold. Where it has set up and hold? Can you see this diagram around the rising edge, uh, around the falling edge? Look at this. This is a clock input. 
there is a falling edge of the clock so the d input must set up and hold around the falling edge that defines the end of the sampling period at the end of the sampling period your data is stable for some time and uh, that is the falling edge of the clock so set up time and the data should hold okay so until the hold time so t hold is also coming into the picture okay so you got to know about two delays now now the output initially changes you can see here you can see here at the q output the output initially changes okay so after your clock to queue contamination delay and then once your output is changes after your the clock to queue contamination delay that is the latch will become transparent on the rising edge of the clock and settles after your clock to queue propagation delay that's what your tccq and tpcq the latch should become transparent so output begins to change after your clock to queue after your clock to queue contamination delay and settles after your clock to queue propagation delay okay because the latch should become transparent once your latch will become transparent then what happens it is going to copy the value of d or it is going to track the value of d so now your output is continues to track the input which is our input that is d input after some d to q contamination delay and your output is completely settles down after your d to q propagation delay are you getting it so six delays are coming into the picture that is setup time hold time clock to queue propagation delay clock to queue contamination delay d to queue propagation delay d to queue contamination delay are you getting it guys hello yes ma'am hello yes, are you getting it okay so you have to think whether i have to use a flip flop or a latch in your circuitry because latch when you use a latch more delays are coming into the picture but there are some advantages if you use a latch and if you use a flip flop there are some disadvantages also okay so depending upon the specification depending upon the customer requirement we'll be using a flip flop or a latch in our design circuitry okay guys next we will discuss about the uh, maximum delay constraints okay so the maximum delay uh, constraint uh, i'm going to discuss about uh, with the uh, all three circuits that is again with your flip flop based circuit uh, two phase latch based circuits and pulsed latch circuits okay now my question is what do you mean by a setup time failure or a maximum delay failure hello guys what do you mean by a setup time failure or a maximum delay failure hello are you there guys yes ma'am yeah what do you mean by that input is not stable uh, just before the clock transition ah uh, input is not uh, input is not stable the d value is there ma'am that will be not be stable like it will be fluctuating before the clock transition is happening uh -huh. not a proper answer ma'am uh, just before the active clock edge is there uh for mm -hmm. the whatever the setup time is there at that time mm -hmm. uh, the d input should be stable but it's not mm -hmm. stable because of some propagation delay problem some critical yes. path is causing a lot of propagation delay because of which it is unstable correct correct so what i can say that uh, that depends uh, that it it may depends on your combinational logic delay or it is also depends whatever you have said that uh, the d input value 
which is uh, unstable or it may miss its setup time and it may give a wrong value okay so what i can say with a proper uh, uh, you know a technical sentence is that so if the combinational logic delay is too great if the combinational logic delay is too great that means it's too much the receiving element will miss its setup time and sample the wrong value are you getting it if the combinational logic delay is too great the receiving element will miss its setup time and sample the wrong value this is called as setup time failure or a maximum delay failure this is called as setup time failure or a maximum delay failure how we can solve this how we can solve this so as a designer i can solve by redesigning the combinational logic to be faster okay where all wiring delay will be there i can minimize the wiring delay okay or uh, instead of uh, using uh, the and and inverter example i can use directly an and gate i'm just giving an example okay i can directly use an and gate okay so i can redesign the combinational logic to be faster or by increasing the clock period so i may say that okay this clock period or oh, 1000 nanoseconds or oh, 1000 nanoseconds is not sufficient so i will increase the clock period as 1200 nanoseconds okay so i can avoid the setup time failure or a maximum delay failure by increasing the or redesigning the combinational logic uh, uh, to be uh, faster or by increasing the clock period okay but what is setup time failure or a maximum delay failure if the combinational logic delay is too great the receiving element will miss its setup time and sample the wrong value is that clear guys is this concept is clear because in unit uh, one again we are going to discuss about this that's what i'm stressing on this maximum and minimum delay constraints is that clear guys yes ma'am okay so let us take an example of a flip flop uh, uh, ma uh, based maximum delay constraints okay so you can see the circuit diagram this is the maximum delay constraints on a flip flop based method so from one flip flop to the next okay assuming here i'm assuming ideal clocks there is no skew i'm going to discuss about uh, what do you mean by uh, skew clock skew and what do you mean by uh, the time borrowing in the next class okay time borrowing and clock skew that also it is required okay so because later if i do uh, the unit 2 or unit 3 you will be already knowing the concept about this okay so uh, now uh, an for analyzing this uh, maximum delay constraints i'm assuming there is no uh, skew and i'm also i'm assuming a ideal clock okay so now i'm just uh, calling this as a path so path means you can uh, see the arrow mark okay so the arrow mark is starting from here okay that is the path begins with the uh, rising edge of the clock and it is going to triggering uh, the f1 that is uh, the flip flop one and uh, the data it is going to propagate to the output of the flip flop that is a q1 and then it is um, through the combinational logic and then it is going to move up to the d2 and then it is going to setting up at f2 before the next rising edge of the clock okay the path begins at the rising edge of the clock if the path begins with the rising edge of the clock and by triggering your f1 then which delay it is going to coming into the picture it is clock to queue propagation delay okay and the data must propagate to the output to the flip flop that is output of the flip flop is q1 and then through the combinational logic and then to the d2 that is the second flip flop input and setting up with f2 before the next rising edge of the clock setting up with f2 means the setup time is coming into the picture 
manner and the combinational logic it is going to give a uh, two types of delays i discussed that is contamination delay and the propagation delay but in this particular diagram i have written only the propagation delay because i am discussing uh, i am discussing the maximum delay constraint maximum delay constraint is related to the propagation delay and minimum delay constraint it is related to the contamination delay are you getting it maximum delay constraint is related to the setup time uh, clock to queue propagation delay and propagation delay whereas minimum delay constraint it is going to discuss about the whole time minimal cont uh, contamination delay and clock to queue contamination delay are you getting it uh -huh. guys are you getting it maximum yes, delay constraint means setup and propagation delay minimum delay constraint means whole time and contamination delay are you getting it yes ma'am yes. okay so now this is the operation now you in this diagram you can able to see the three different delays setup time clock to queue propagation delay and the propagation delay now what is the equation i want to write the clock period must be at least what is the constraint is the clock period must be at least what may be the clock period when you are designing the circuit so otherwise the setup time failure may happen or maximum delay failure it may happen so either you have to increase the clock period or you have to redesign the combinational logic to be faster so there is some constraint the uh, the topic says that maximum delay constraint so maximum delay constraint means what may be the clock cycle the clock period must be at least at least that means that your tc is nothing but your clock period it should be greater than or equal to it should be greater than or equal to i will show the equation okay so your tc should be greater than or equal to tpcq plus tpd plus t setup are you getting it your clock period should be greater than or equal to tpcq clock to queue propagation delay plus propagation delay plus setup time or alternatively you can also write it as your combinational logic because why the two equations you can observe the equation 1 and 2 you can observe the equation 1 and 2 because i said either you can increase the clock period or you can redesign the combination logic to be faster for redesigning the combination logic to be faster your tpd should be less than or equal to tc minus t setup plus tpcq tc is nothing but your cycle time minus the setup time plus the clock to queue propagation delay this we are calling it as a sequencing overhead so sequencing overhead is nothing but which is simply the cycle time less the sequencing overhead and it is introduced by the setup time and the clock to queue propagation delay okay either your tc should be greater than or equal to tpcq plus tpd plus t setup or alternatively you can also write the equation as tpd should be less than or equal to tc minus t setup plus tpcq are you getting it guys hello yes ma'am are are yes, you getting it yes ma'am okay okay so next this is with respect to your flip flop based method we'll now slowly move on to the two phase transparency based latch method for uh, equations i'll just uh, uh, go up to show the uh, equations okay so this is with respect to your uh, uh, two phase latch maximum delay uh, constraints okay so look at the circuit diagram there are how many datas d1 and d2 there are two outputs q1 q2 and d3 will be the next stage that is the second uh, stage so that's what i have written there it has 51 you can see here 51 52 again 51 comes means it is the second cycle it is repeating it so for 51 uh, it is one half cycle 52 will be the second half cycle we are going to use two latches here okay so 
let us assume your data d1 arrives at l1 when it is going to arrive at l1 whenever your phi1 will become transparent whenever the large l1 become transparent or where your phi1 will become high the data d1 is going to arrive at a q1 okay then that data is propagate through l1 the first block of combinational logic and l2 and the second block of combinational logic okay so technically if you speak the d3 could arrive okay so that is with the as late as the setup time before the falling edge of your phi1 okay because that's what i said it is the second cycle okay i'm not going to discuss about uh, the l3 okay so uh, the the data d1 arrives at l1 while the latch is transparent that is phi1 is high and that data is propagates through l1 the first block of combinational logic and then at l2 and the second block of combinational uh, logic okay so here also i have assumed here as ideal clock there is no skew okay and then now what may be the equation what may be the uh, cycle time if you see this i just gave the idea right uh, for the flip flop based method now what may be the cycle time over here if you see here uh, the d1 should be okay q1 should be have uh, tp dq1 that is clock to q propagation delay then tpd1 that is due to your combinational logic block 1 and then tpdq2 that is clock to q uh, uh, d sorry not it is not clock to q it is a, a d to q propagation delay and then uh, due to the combinational logic it is a propagation delay that is tp2 tpd2 okay so four delays are coming into the picture the first one is d to q propagation delay of your uh, first latch then of your first combination logic block 1 so propagation delay 1 and then with respect to your second latch so it is d to q propagation delay 2 and with respect to your combination logic 2 so it is tpd2 so what may be your cycle time now cycle time should be greater than or equal to add of all adding of all yes correct adding of all tpdq1 plus tpd1 plus tpdq2 plus tpd2 what may be the uh, alternate uh, solution that is a sequencing over it how you can uh, design the combinational logic block alternatively you can write the equation as combinational logic block as tpd as addition of those two mam like the combination delay if you add then uh, bringing all the things on the yeah. right hand side correct so that's what your uh, tpd1 plus tpd2 i am writing it as tpd itself and your tpd should be less than or equal to tc minus 2 tpdq this also i am adding it two uh, uh, what is that uh, tpdq1 plus tpdq2 i'll be taking it as 2 tpdq that is my sequencing overhead are you getting it hello guys yes ma'am yes ma'am hello are you getting it so your tc should be greater than or equal to tpdq1 plus tpd1 plus tpdq2 plus tpd2 or else you can write the uh, propagation delay equation as tpd1 plus tpd2 is equal to tpd that should be less than or equal to tc minus 2 tpdq because tpdq1 plus tpdq2 is nothing but 2 tpdq are you getting it yes ma'am okay next this is with respect to the um, two phase transparent base latches and now we will discuss about the pulsed latches see the pulsed latch uh, having a two diagrams you can uh, see here right there are two different diagrams are there okay suppose if you are look at this circuit diagram so uh, the data d1 is going to arrive at q1 whenever your phi p is high or whenever the latch is become transparent and then it is passing through the combinational logic block and then it is going to appear at uh, 
at D2, okay, and it is going to arrive at uh, L2. So whenever for the second cycle, whenever your 5p will again becomes high. Okay, so that is the explanation of about uh, the first diagram. So look at this. Uh, here there are two cases are there. TPW is greater than T setup and TPW is less than T setup. Okay, suppose if the pulse is wide enough, if the pulse is wide, okay, the maximum delay constraints for pulsed latches is similar to that of your two-faced uh, transparent base latches. If the pulse is wide enough, it is almost similar to your two-faced transparent based latch method. Okay. So except that here only one latch is present. In case of your two-faced transparent base latches, there are two latches are present. If your pulse is wide enough, it is similar to your two-faced transparent base latch, latch method. There we are using two latches. But in case of your pulsed latches, we are using only one latch. Okay. So however, if your pulse is a narrow, look at this second diagram here. The pulse is narrow than the setup time, then the data must set up before the pulse rises. The data must set up before the pulse rises. Okay. So look at these two diagrams over here. So if your pulse is wide enough, then what is the delay you are going to get? TPDQ, that is D to Q propagation delay plus TPD because this is due to the propagation delay. Propagation delay is coming through your combination logic, TPD. Suppose if your pulse is narrow enough, so what happens? D, uh, D to Q uh, propagation delay, TPD will be there, but one more delay will be coming into the picture, that is T setup. That is T setup. And uh, we are going to calculate here in the equation as TPW also, okay? TPW is also will be there because depending upon your pulse width, we are calculating how much narrow it is, okay? So what are all the delays? TPW, T setup, uh, TPD, and TPDQ. TPDQ, that is uh, D to Q propagation delay, okay? So now what is the equation for the two cases? First case is very uh, simple, okay? It is similar to your two-phase transparent base latch method. Only one latch will be uh, present. So look at this equation here. Your clock cycle TC should be greater than or equal to maximum of TPDQ plus TPD. This is with respect to the first case where your pulse is wide enough. The pulse is wide enough means your TC should be greater than or equal to TPDQ plus TPD. If your pulse is narrow, then your TC should be greater than or equal to TPCQ plus TPD plus T setup minus TPW. Why minus TPW? Because if you see the circuit diagram here, okay, you will be calculating the setup time over here. So you should subtract this value, TPW, okay? So that's why it is minus a TPW. Minus TPW means because here, okay, minus TPW. So this is with respect to the second case, your pulse is narrow, your TC should be greater than or equal to TPCQ plus TPD plus T setup minus TPW. If your pulse is wide enough, then it is TPDQ plus TPD. Are you getting it? So alternatively, we can also write it in terms of your uh, uh, propagation delay. So TPD should be less than or equal to TC minus maximum of uh, TPDQ with respect to the uh, first method, that is the pulse is wide enough. With respect to the second case, that is pulse is narrow, that is uh, TPDQ, that is D to Q propagation delay plus T setup minus TPW. Minus TPW means if you take outside, it will become plus TPW. This will become minus TPCQ and minus T setup. Okay. So any doubt? No, ma'am. So any doubt? No doubt. So any doubt with respect to the maximum delay constraints? 
Ma'am, uh, what is the advantages of that uh, two-phase system and two-phase system actually when compared to the third thing? Two-phase transparent-based uh, latch system. Yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, that uh, when I'm going to discuss about the minimum delay constraints, you'll come to know. Okay, yes, because in, uh, and also when you go for uh, uh, time borrowing. Okay. Time borrowing. In that's what I said. No, in in flip flop best method, you cannot borrow the time. Time. Yeah. That is a disadvantage. You have to wait. Uh, you have to waste the time. So suppose if the data arrives too early, you have to uh, wait uh, yeah. until for the next uh, clock edge. But in the two phase uh, uh, time uh, no, transparent best layer system, you can uh, uh, the it. time borrowing is possible. And uh, um, not only that, uh, the clock skew. Uh, sorry. Time borrowing is possible in case of uh, the pulsed based as well as two phase based. And one more advantage is that there is, the clock skew will not be there in that uh, two phase transparent based uh, system. Okay. That is the advantage. Okay. 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 So that I will be discussing in the next class. So I am going to discuss about the minimum delay failure. That is the whole time failure and uh, the time borrowing and clock skew. Once you understood this basic concepts, you know, then I can uh, uh, easily go with the syllabus flow. Okay. So there are some advantages of using a flip-flop based method and disadvantages also there. And uh, the two-phase transparent. And that non-overlap is there, no? So usually the industry people, uh, uh, it is very easy to take, uh, instead of designing the T non-overlap, no? It is better to take uh, the clock and its complement. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, so that is also there. Anyway, it's uh, now the time is uh, one o'clock, uh, one ten, I think so. So I'll uh, stop the class. I'll just take the attendance. Huh? Uh, so any doubt you can ask me. Even sometimes, no, uh, because uh, we are in the uh, we are academicians. Uh, so sometimes in industry uh, oriented type doubts and all. Uh, even I have to ask uh, your super seniors only, so I will clarify. But uh, you can ask a doubt, okay? There is no in that. So sometimes, some sometimes I may know the answer, and uh, sometimes I will go through it, and I'll come back and I will uh, solve it, okay? So uh, I'm even my knowledge will also going to enhance because your uh, seniors and UG students also your uh, so also working in. Uh, uh, some of the companies and especially they are also working on physical design and uh, uh, the some students are especially working on static timing analysis also. So I will get back to you. Okay. So that is not a problem. So attendance is. Uh, the, you can just uh, tell. Uh, I, I sure I can tell you a reverse number. Uh? Zero two. Zero zero two. Na. Okay, yes, then another zero three, three. ma'am. Zero zero three. Ashwita. Zero Ashwita? five. Zero five. Yeah, Bhargav. Uh, zero six, ma'am. Okay, Nikhileshwar. Zero seven, ma'am. Okay, Chandana. Zero eight, ma'am. Okay, Karthik Kumar. Eleven, ma'am. Karthik Kumar, eleven. Then Karthik S. Kulkarni? Kulkarni, sir, is here? One more bit, hello, bit, 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 rapa. Karthik S. Kulkarni? Kaushik? 13, 1, 3. 13, ah. Next, Kavyashri? 14. Kirti? 15, ma'am. Okay, Kiran? 16, ma'am. Maulap? Maulap Boshte. You got tennis, Kodala Nana. Inga Madadranivo. I will take in between then. Shesha Sai? Pampa Patti has now joined. Karteka, you should not turn on. Present, ma'am. What present? Next class, I won't give attendance if you turn on. In between, I'll take attendance. What is your lesson? Karthik. 12. 12, okay. 12. Okay, pa, okay. 
and who is that uh, shesha sai 21 पंपापति नौ जॉइंड ओके रोशन संजिता सौरभ सौरभ थर्टी थर्टी मैम सूरज देनप युएस नेक्स्टीश योगानंद योगानंद योगानंदी मैम दैट वन यू आर शोइंग नो मैम दैट वन